some of you have been asking for some specific recipes online from me. One of them has been Goshto Piazza. Now, Goshto Piazza is a very classic recipe from Mughal India. Now, there are many stories about it. Uh, the way name works out, one can understand there are two types of onion or two onions or twice the onions. There are many stories around it. There was even uh, a court here in uh, Akbar's, uh, King Akbar's court called Mulado Piazza. Some people think it's named after him. I don't know what the story is. And I have come across about a billion recipes and I thought I will make billion and one. So this is the last recipe perhaps uh, in terms of uh, Goshto Piazza. But jokes apart, I have tried to simplify it so that we can approach it in a much more sensical way and take this forward. So there are two parts to the recipe. So instead of goat, which is often used in India, I'm using lamb because that's what is easily available in the UK. This recipe applies perfectly fine to beef, to pork, to chicken. I wouldn't say about fish, but you know, take your pick. Even venison, it'll work incredibly well. Now, what I'm going to do is just explain you spices very quickly. I've got lamb here. For the whole spices to start with, I've got cumin, I've got bay leaf, black cardamom, green cardamom, uh, black pepper and some cinnamon. And then I got some white onions. I'll start with sunflower oil, saute the whole spices, go with the onions, saute them, add ginger garlic paste. I made a fine paste today. Uh, and then add the lamb, cook it through. What I did, uh, you can just mince the tomatoes or puree them in a blender and strain them through. Or if you live in a part of the world where you can find passata, just buy passata. So I've got a beautiful passata, so I'm going to use that because I'm looking for a very smooth gravy. And in terms of spices, I need coriander powder, cumin powder, garam masala, turmeric, salt, red chili, and kasuri methi, which is fenugreek leaves. Then once the curry is ready, the second part of onion goes in, okay? And that is, I'm going to saute, uh, start with the oil, saute coriander seeds, red chili and the green chili and the ginger and some red onion, sorted them gently. And I thought, why not? I got fantastic spring onion growing in my garden. So I just went out and brought some spring onion shoots, cut them and I'll chop them and add them as well. So am I making gosht teen piazza? Let's stick to do piazza only. Sunflower oil, uh, about two tablespoons. And you start with a very high heat. You want oil to reach the smoking point fairly quickly. And especially with the red meat like lamb or um, beef and goat, black cardamom works incredibly well. Okay, so that goes in first. I always tend to do that with the black meat, uh, sorry, with the red meat, especially when I'm using black cardamom. And the cumin seeds go in. Oh, the smell of black cardamom is just amazing, I tell you. Cinnamon. This is real cinnamon, not using cassia because I ran out of cassia. I have no cassia left in my kitchen at home. So I have to wait for this lockdown to be over before I could go out. So I'm cooking with whatever I have. But still very close to the perfect recipe. Onions going. So this was one medium onion. An idea is to Saute the onions till they are pretty brown in color. Beautifully colored, okay? Just gonna lower the heat a bit so I don't burn my onions. And add diced lamb. Uh, this was taken from leg of lamb. It's about 600 to 700 grams. I'm going to steal it first. I'm keeping the heat medium high. Uh, idea is to steal the lamb as quickly as possible. So the juices remain inside. And especially during this time of the year around Easter, lamb in this country in the UK is just beautiful. It's really great quality and throughout England, 
uh, Wales, Scotland and Ireland, you find really lovely lamb. And then there are some very special breeds that you can buy. Uh, the one I buy is often Welsh salt marsh lamb. Uh, and sometimes I also buy Rooney marsh lamb, which is east side of England. And Welsh is of course, Welsh salt marsh comes from Wales. Beautiful stories there, how they kind of rear their lamb and what they feed them. It's a, it's a kind of salty marshy grass they live on, feed on. Very good passion when it comes to agriculture in this part of the world. It really motivates you, moves you to see uh, people take so much care in looking after their herd. Okay, now uh, lamb is nicely sealed. I think this is good enough for me. Uh, I could go a little bit more, but this is actually quite fine in my opinion. Most of it is actually nicely sealed. I'll add the spices. So add about two teaspoons of coriander powder. About one teaspoon of cumin powder. Half a teaspoon of turmeric powder. Half a teaspoon of red chili. About a teaspoon of kasuri methi. Half a teaspoon of salt. And half a teaspoon of garam masala as well. As I add that, a good time to add my ginger garlic paste as well. About two teaspoons. I'm going to mix that really well. And then I'm going to add the tomato paste stroke passata, okay? So as I said, I have used passata. You could use just fresh tomatoes chopped or even minced in the blender. Yeah, that would do. So I've got a teaspoon here. So I'll, I'll say about two tomatoes. That's what it is after straining. So I'll add half of it. I think I've taken a little more than half. I've, I've added three fourths of it, to be honest. Okay, so what I do next is add about 150 ml of water in this. Okay, and just make sure that you scrape the bottom of the pan really well. There's nothing getting caught at the bottom of the pan and you bring this to simmer, put the lid on and cook nicely for a good 15 to 20 minutes till lamb is almost cooked, okay? So we have to reach that stage. You want to keep it a really thick gravy and that's what I have achieved. So I will let this simmer on on the side while I prepare the rest of the ingredients for this, okay? I'll put it on the, another flame here. That hob works incredibly well. Hopefully it will not let me down. Now what I have to do next is prepare a kind of tarka. So Okay, coriander goes in first. You throw in ginger as well. All the chilies go in. Chilies can make it hot guys, okay? So use it, use your discretion that how much you want to use. And I'll add the onion. I'm, I'm holding back to one chili here. Don't feel like adding all of it. I got two teenagers and they can be fussy sometimes. I probably will take the chili out before I serve them. The idea is to just saute these onions till they become 
really soften them. They don't, they don't, they don't need to get colored, okay? The idea is to just soften them, pick up the flavor from coriander, ginger, chili, and it goes in the curry. Though I'm using three types of onion, uh, using spring onion greens as well. But what I'm doing with the red onion, I used brown onion, British brown onions. You can use white or brown, whatever you get. And then I had some red onion, so I thought it looked beautiful in the curry. So I've gone for this uh, and then spring onion. But just in case you have uh, spring onion as well in, in the fridge, there's no harm that this stage can be spring onion. And I think it will taste incredibly nice. And Dobiana has it's a kind of recipe which has kind of been there forever. Even when I was a trainee chef, uh, it was something that I remember cooking many times, but different incarnations to be honest. And India being such a large country, uh, all the Mughal influences got uh, spread out in the country and every region had kind of exerted their uh, way of doing food. So when you go to Bengal, they will have slightly different way. The Muslim food from there would have slightly different way of making this than people from North India, i.e. Lucknow or Delhi. I don't need to cook more than that. I'll bring the pan back here. Switch this heat off. This is the coriander I'm not proud of, but I'll just add there anyway. And I'll add all of tarka in here. It sounds like awful amount of spicing going in, okay? But you know, use your own discretion guys. If you if you feel that you don't want to add that much spices and you want to rather you rather eat little little only, you could easily do that. This I do it just to deglaze the pan. Okay? I have a little bit of water here as well which I will just scrape it and put it back in. When I bring it to heat, this will be fine. I'm just gonna reheat it once, so we are good. That's why, you know, a lot of people in India, they would use a pressure cooker. Nothing wrong with that, if you know how to operate it and how to work with it. I've kept it very generic. I have three pressure cookers in my house, but I just wanted to do it in an open pan so that I can show you how you can do it with very basics in your house. Didn't want to go pressure cooker route. Right, so just before I finish, I'll just add a little bit of spring onion. That goes in, looks amazing. Put that back. Wow, that richard is quite on top. <laughs> All you need with this is some roti. Really nice roti, okay? I'll get Mrs. K to make rotis for us tonight. And this is done. Okay?